we're going to talk about coordinate volunteers for the greater community impact with Zoom Workplace. Now, we've been using Zoom, but have we heard of Zoom Workplace? I don't know much about it, so I'm excited about this webinar. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here at TechSoup. I'm going to show you on the next slide how you can engage with us. You're going to get the recording of this um, Zoom webinar. I'm saying Zoom all day, right? And the slides are going to be lots of slides with lots of key notes, so you'll be the Use those again and get some more insight. Um, check your email, email email inbox. Now I'm messing up. In about two days, but actually you'll probably get it tomorrow because I'm just that fast. If you need the closed caption, just look at the bottom of your screen and tap on the CC button. I'm going to move out of the way because you're not here to see me, but I do want you to answer the survey that's going to pop up when you leave Zoom and let us know what other topics you would like to hear about from Zoom. I'm going to turn this over to Casey. She's going to introduce herself. She's from Zoom and some of her other colleagues and our volunteers here today. Take it away, Casey. Yes, thank you so much, Aretha. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining today's webinar. I'm Casey Yu. I'm the Social Impact and Nonprofit Product Lead here at Zoom, and I work part of the Zoom Cares team, which is dedicated to nonprofits, and I'm based in Jersey. Um, I see a few Jersey folks in the chat, so Hi, <laughs> um, I'll pass it over to Paul. Thanks, Casey. Yeah, so Paul Minyagi, I head up our AI and ISV market acceleration team here at Zoom, and I'm based in Seattle, Washington. Hey, folks, my name is Vipul, and I'm the associate director at Category. Um, we are a volunteer management company and we create volunteering experiences essentially, but uh, if you would imagine Kudera is a big restaurant, then uh, I'm the head chef in the kitchen. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Emma Liu. I'm from uh, Center for the Pacific Asian Family. I'm the volunteer and intern coordinator, so I'm from Los Angeles. Very nice to meet everybody. Yes. And once again, thank you everyone for joining today. In today's webinar, we are going to go over Zoom Cares, which is our global social impact arm of Zoom. And then my colleague, Paul, will be describing and demonstrating some of the Zoom features that are already part of the product that you may be already using in order to maximize and optimize your time. And then finally, we'll be hearing from Vipul and Emma to talk a little bit about their own use cases of Zoom products. Now, Zoom's core, very core value of care enabled the creation of Zoom Cares back in 2020 as the global social impact arm of Zoom. Since then, we've been on a mission to serve and connect communities, building positive, equitable impact for people and the planet. Since our inception, we've distributed over $61 million to global communities. We've done this through three different ways with our philanthropy work, which is our grant making efforts with our crisis response grants and global grant making through our people with employee volunteering and giving, and finally product. Our nonprofit discount program is made up of product grants, um, which is related to providing product donations to eligible nonprofits. And then our discount program is specific to our partnership with TechSoup, where we offer a 50% discount on eligible um, products. This discount program has been around since 2017, and we're proud to have served over 36,000 nonprofits since then. And we offer 50% off of our Zoom Workplace Pro, Workplace Business, as well as webinar for up to 500, 1,000, and 3,000 attendees. And as of this month, we're very excited to introduce also webinar 5,000. We also offer a large meeting add-on so that you can increase your meeting size to 500 or 1,000 people. This is available to eligible 501c3s and public libraries with operating budgets less than 10 million US dollars. And you can access it through TechSoup's page with a low admin fee of $18. Now here at Zoom, we serve thousands of nonprofits and are really grateful that you've chosen our platform to lead your critical work. We've heard directly from nonprofits stating that these are just some of the reasons why they've chosen Zoom. First, that human connection is critical to impact. We know that the work you lead is built upon the strength of your relationships with others, and therefore you need reliable, high quality communications technology in order to strengthen and build those relationships. 
whether it's working with a client to receive mental health services, or you're providing mentorship to young students, or just organizing folks together to support a cause that means a lot to you. Zoom also provides seamless digital stakeholder engagement. We know every day that you're working with a variety of stakeholders through a fundraising gala or board meetings, and of course with the folks in the community, and we can support with all of those different interactions and settings. We have a variety of accessibility features like closed captioning in different languages and a live interpretation feature as needed. And now as Zoom AI Companion, you can also get your summary of your meeting notes sent over to you so that you can focus your time on building relationships with those in the call. And finally, we know that Zoom just works. We know you already wear several hats at your organization and that you don't necessarily have time to learn about how to set up a whole new tool to set up your calls and collaborate with your team. Zoom is easy to use and people of all backgrounds are familiar and confident to already use it. So we thank you for your leadership to create positive change in your communities and hope that your time here today with us is valuable and insightful. And now I'm happy to hand it over to my colleague, Paul, so that he can go over the product in more depth. Awesome. Well, thank you, Casey. And uh, and thank you all for having us join uh, this call today. And um, this is such a great venue to, to meet all of you virtually as well. And uh, what I'm going to be taking you through is uh, a little bit about Zoom, right? But also more importantly, what we call our Zoom workplace. And so from a lot of the questions up front in terms of people's familiarity with, with Zoom and all that, which is fantastic, everyone kind of knows Zoom for maybe one or two things that we do. But since uh, over the last couple of years, we've been really expanding our portfolio and our platform to really encompass a lot of other ways in which people can work and connect together. So that's what we're going to cover today. And so there's going to be a little bit of a story tell in terms of, you know, what we're doing and kind of setting up the context. And then we'll do some show and tell to actually show you uh, how some of these things work and then help you get started um, as well. So as I kind of, you know, stated up front, right, I think a lot of people think about Zoom uh, in terms of this, right? We get together in a meeting uh, and we do this virtually, right? We share content, we're sharing slides here today. Maybe we're doing a screen share. Maybe we're talking about a certain particular uh, activity or event that we wanna uh, that we want to plan for. But at the end of the day, it's really about that meeting, right? And doing it in a in a virtual sense, using video, using audio. And to Casey's point, it just works, right? Um, but what if, and we started thinking about this years ago with Zoom, what if we could start to bring other modes of work and connection in other, uh, into other ways, right? And so when we think about how we connect as individuals and we connect as teams, we're not always in a meeting doing that, right? We could be in a very informal setting. We could be sharing ideas. We could be brainstorming. We could be coordinating and things going back and forth. And then for like large events, especially for community outreach and other types of events that you want to do, there's definitely that forum of like what we're doing today, a webinar where we need to take those learnings, the things that we've discussed, the things that we're learning and, and we're discussing as a team, and we want to disseminate those uh, to all of our constituents and, and, uh, and community leaders and others, right? So different modes of work, different ways in which people can work. And with Zoom, we can accomplish all these things in one place. And we'll, we'll show you that. And so it really brings together meetings, right, which everyone kind of understands what Zoom is. It also brings team collaboration through a series of team chat and other types of capabilities, as well as events and webinars all brought together. And we've also been adding a lot of AI capabilities now into the mix as well. And our AI companion strategy, and we'll show parts of this here today, because it's definitely a buzzword that everyone's talking about uh, in the technology world, but we really tried to design our AI companion to be just that, a companion that can follow you wherever you go across the Zoom platform. It can uh, take notes for you. It can give you summarizations. It can give you insights in terms of other things that are happening across all these different channels and really help streamline how you work and connect together. And so we'll show you some examples of those things today. 
So in terms of the Zoom workplace, right, we think about all the different things that we uh, surface up in our Zoom client. As soon as, you Zoom, as soon as you download and you install and log into the Zoom client, all these different capabilities start to appear. Whiteboarding, mail, calendar, events, calling, meetings, and team chat, which, which we'll spend on quite a bit today, but all these things together in one place. So I don't have to go to different websites. I don't have to go to different applications. I don't have to go to different tools. I can bring all those things together and have that same ease of use, ease of access that Zoom is really kind of known for. And at the end of the day, it just kind of works, right? So what does this kind of look like in terms of collaboration? So when we think about teams and we think about meetings and all the different ways in which people work, right, we really set out to uh, bring together all of the best in terms of how we know uh, Zoom, uh, Zoom meetings work and that simplicity and that ease of use and really bring it together to encapsulate what this picture in the center of this slide really exemplifies. How can these two people bring and connect to each other when maybe they're not in the same room or maybe not even in the same time zone or maybe in, in some other place in the world at different times, right? And so our team chat application does just that. We bring that ease of use of the meetings and all those things together with uh, an ability for, for people to chat with each other. Uh, you can search for all the content and discussions and things that you've had with other people. We even carry forward in this case, what's pictured on the left-hand side of the slide, what we call continuous meeting chat. So we're all familiar with Zoom. We chat in the, in the side panel, like what you're seeing here, but what if that side panel can carry forward and continue on, right? And not just disappear after the meeting's done. So all the things that we've shared, all the ideas that have been uh, brought up, all the different things that the team has discussed and, and, um, and had insight into can carry forward into a chat channel or a room that you can then invite other people into, you can chat and continue that conversation on so you don't lose a beat. The really kind of cool thing that we're also highlighting here today, especially with this community, is the bottom left-hand point of including everyone. So in way, the way in which Zoom works, you all know that if you schedule a meeting, um, and you invite people, people can just join, right? They don't necessarily have to have a license. They don't have to buy anything. They just join and it just works. The same happens with our team chat application. So start thinking about not only the teams that you work with within your organization, but also how could you use team chat in this way to connect with each other, to uh, connect with your community, right? And invite them just as easily into chat channels and other things that you wanna do with them to continue that coordination, continue that communication as well. On the top right-hand side of this slide is the Elevate with, a with AI. And so all the things that happen within meetings. So think about all the things I'm discussing here today, as well as Casey and the rest of the TechSoup team, right? Being captured as far as not only a transcript that I can read through, but more importantly, have the AI allow a, summary, a summarization to take place so you get the best of what was discussed, what were the actions, what were the uh, decisions that were made, who talked about what, and more importantly, what matters to me. And so then you can start to ask our AI companion, hey, did someone say something about this in the meeting? Or was there an action for me about this particular topic? Or other things that you can use in the AI, and we'll show you some of this here today. And then these last two points around workflow, so we can uh, bring together other tools that you may use like Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive uh, or even Asana or other types of like applications. We have so many uh, tools that integrate into Zoom these days that we've started bringing a lot of those into these workflows that you as the user can actually start to create as your own. So if you're familiar with tools like Zapier or make.com or other tools like that, we have something built right into Zoom that also allows you to do a lot of those same functions. And then lastly, easily migrate. So we have tools where if you're using, you know, 
hate to say Microsoft Teams or you're using Slack or something else, right? We have tools where you can actually migrate onto Zoom team chat fairly easily and something where all your chat messages, the people you've invited, all those things can be brought into Zoom uh, fairly easily. Okay. So in terms of team chat and some of the core features, these are just some of the highlights uh, on the left-hand side. We're not going to go through all the features because there's so many, but these are probably the ones that are probably the most important that we hear most from our customers in terms of chats and channels, right? A room that I want to have a conversation with someone, maybe one-to-one -one, or a channel where I want to have multi a lot of people in that conversation and it's open to everyone. Uh, rich text editing, organizing things in folders, emoji reactions, so I can give people a thumbs up or, um, or other types of reactions in terms of things that they're doing, uh, personal notes, external chatting. So if I have external people that I want to have, I have a clear de delineation between this is someone internal to my organization versus someone that's external to my organization that I can share uh, other pieces of information and stuff with. And then voice and video messages also uh, added into the platform as well. So maybe we don't want to have a meeting every single time. And I just want to record maybe a really quick snippet of something or an idea that I have and use video to convey that message. Again, I can do that within uh, our team chat application. Search, you know, is, is such an underrated capability, especially in this time, in this day and age where there's so many things that people use, the average person or average enterprise we know uh, uses between you know, 80 to 250 different applications within their organization. So having the context of, hey, what file did someone share? Or what was that chat message about? Or what were the decisions or the transcript of that conversation or the summary? We made our search accessible across all the different things that happen in Zoom. So from your meetings, to chat messages, to files that you share, pictures, uh, other things that may happen in there. I have one place to search for that and have that context brought to me very quickly and easily. And then another feature, which we'll show here as well, is something that uh, we think this community could definitely use a lot of, and it's something we're really proud of. And we call it shared spaces. And the best way to explain it without getting into all the technical jargon and things like that is if you look at the picture on the right-hand side of the slide and you think of a conference room or, a, or an office setting or a location where your team is at, right? There's usually like a common area room, maybe the water cooler room or something of that sort that's there where everybody can gather and everybody can connect. But then you have other rooms that may have a door Maybe that door locks, maybe there's windows, maybe there's no windows, right? Depending on the privacy and the things that you want to have in place for those particular rooms, we've recreated this picture on the right in a virtual sense, in a concept we call shared spaces, where you can basically create as many of these as you want, but basically a common area, let's say it's about a project, and then I have different aspects of that project. Maybe there's a budget team, maybe there's an assembly team. Maybe there's a community outreach team. Maybe there's different aspects of that project that I want to do. And I want to have different rooms or different spaces where those conversations can take place, right? And so <clears throat> keeping things separate, keeping things organized, but then also having that common room to come back uh, with, um, um, with, the, um, uh, with the common room that's also pictured here as well. Okay, and so what's pictured here is what it looks like in our in our um, in our workplace client or the Zoom client uh, when you log in, and we'll show this as well. So you don't need to take screenshots of this. Uh, when we get into the demonstration, it'll make even more sense. Okay, so engaging your stakeholders, right? <clears throat> so one of the cool things that we've learned and it, that's been really important this in this time of uh, of the season right, in terms of different um, elections and different, you know, community activation and volunteer programs and things of that sort, um, scaling your message and doing outreach 
uh, to a one-to-many kind of forum is super important. And so a lot of customers use Zoom for this function as well. Again, all within the Zoom client, all simple to use, all same controls. It's just a way to scale your message and give it a little bit more control. So I don't have as many like two-way conversations and people talking over each other and things like that. The important thing with a webinar is I need to get my message out and I need to get feedback in. So having Q&A, having other types of aspects for people to react and other things which we're already seeing happen uh, in this meeting as well. And so we have a number of nonprofits and community organizations using our webinar offering as well. And these are just a couple quotes and we won't read these, but just a, an example in terms of how they're using uh, Zoom for uh, outreach and connecting to their communities and things of that sort. And over the last probably 90 days or so, as we've seen our usage of webinars in particular really take off, even more than what it was before, we could do thousands and hundreds of thousands of users um, you know, coming in uh, onto the platform as well. So depending on if you have a small community that you're doing outreach to, or I need to reach a lot of people all at once, uh, we give you that flexibility uh, to do those things. Uh, Casey, I think I lost my control of the slides. Let me help you with that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everyone for your patience. And there you go. You should have it back now. I do not. Why don't you just advance to the next one? There you go. <laughs> okay. okay. Cool. Um, so in terms of, you know, connecting with your teams uh, and things, right, just to kind of summarize this up a little bit, and then we'll, we'll show a few things as well, is the team chat uh, capability that's included as part of the Zoom client allows you to do that collaboration in and outside of meetings, right? So, uh, bringing uh, people the ability to connect with each other and share ideas, chat with each other on a mobile device, on their desktop, or wherever in between, uh, whenever and however they want. We also introduced a capability a few weeks ago that we call Zoom Docs. And Zoom Docs is just another surface area. Think about like Google Docs and combined with Notion, if you're familiar with Notion. It allows you to bring collaboration into a document form. And we'll show you an example of this as well. Really cool in terms of some of the things that we do. And we're getting a huge response in terms of what this provides. But really allows you to um, you know, brainstorm on ide ideas, generate other materials uh, from that. And it's also tied into our AI companion as well. So the meeting summarizations or other insights that you want to have AI to, to create or co-create with you are also included uh, as part of that Zoom doc experience. Um, using Zoom phone, and we'll show this as well. Zoom phone is like a business phone capability that's included in, and added into the Zoom client experience. And so what that means is, especially for organizations where you want to have that professional uh, presence, right? One number for your community to call, um, you know, both inbound and outbound. Maybe you want to do SMS messages for coordination and things, and you don't want people using their personal phones. You could have one uh, number that's associated to your organization and use our uh, native SMS capability as part of Zoom phone to allow that outreach and other kind of ways to communicate with people as well. Uh, and we've got some other examples of some folks on this call that are going to share their use of Zoom phone as well. And then lastly, in terms of AI companion is really there to be your personal assistant, your digital companion to help you make sense of the different aspects that are happening within the meeting. But also more importantly, which we use all the time at Zoom is uh, allow it to take uh, and create summarizations and notes during the meeting uh, so we can spend more time focusing on each other and focusing on what we're discussing and let the AI do the heavy lifting in terms of what's being captured in that meeting uh, and then pr uh, creating that artifact after the meeting as far as the summarization. And we'll show you this as well. 
Next slide. Uh, this is just a screenshot in terms of what Zoom phone looks like uh, as well, which on the left-hand side, we have a mobile client for Zoom and Zoom phone is included in that. So you can receive your business calls on your phone without having to give people your personal number, as well as using the client on the right-hand side on your desktop or iPad or other things uh, to uh, make phone calls, send te uh, text messages out, check voicemail uh, and things as well, uh, all included in there as well. Next slide. And then this is just a screenshot summary of uh, what the SMS uh, actually looks like. And we'll show you this as well. Uh, but I can not only send and receive messages, but with our AI companion, we can also summarize the, the SMS messages as, as well. So think of a lot of back and forth going uh, between people, maybe decisions being made and things. And you know, I need to get that, okay, what were the top things that were discussed? And just break it down for me uh, as a user so I can make sense of all the different back and forth without having to read everything. Next slide. And then lastly, and then we'll get into some of the show and tell here around Zoom Docs and what this kind of looks like. We've created a, an example that we think is going to be relevant for all of you uh, here today. But it's really built with meetings and all the things we've talked about included as part of that. It's tied into the Zoom experience. So again, everything you do within Zoom can also be captured within a Zoom doc. And the thing that, that we love the most is this brings the, the meeting transcript, the summarization, all the actions and things. So you can go from the meeting where we discussed everything to taking action and what do we do next and having one surface area in order to help coordinate and integrate all those things together as well as other tools you may, may have like Asana or whiteboards or other tools and bringing those into docs as well. So cool. So I think the next one, yeah. So let's, so we'll go into the little show and tell here. Uh, and let me go ahead and share out my desktop. Let me close this window. Close this window. Okay, so for a lot of you, when you download and install the Zoom client, this is probably going to be the first screen that you see. And what I want to point your your attention to is uh, a couple things. First is this toolbar up here has a lot of different icons in it. One is calendar, team chat, uh, our docs, mail. Um, clips, scheduler, whiteboard, workflows, and phone. And then we're not going to go through all these today, but what we're going to do is we're going to talk first about team chat. And this is the team chat application. So on the, on the left-hand side, you have all the different channels that you belong to. So if you're familiar with Slack or Microsoft Teams or other tools, it looks very similar to that. Um, I have all the chat channels that are here. I have notifications next to them if I've been mentioned or there's an important message or things of that sort that are here. And I brought up an example here of a chat room uh, that we used actually just last week where we were doing a coordination for an AI trade show in Vegas. Uh, and we were doing some feedback in regards to that. And what I want to point your attention to here is not only just are we chatting back and forth you know, with this team that's here, but there's other different assets and things that have been shared in here. First is I have what's called Zoom Whiteboard, where I can actually create, in this case, there was a flow of when we scan badges for people, the marketing team wanted to share with us, hey, here's the flow that goes through, and this is where the information goes, right? And I can blow this up um, as well. And if I had access uh, or edit access, I would also be able to man manipulate and change this as well, right? It's all within context, all in the same channel. And we also use this channel to coordinate and also provide this feedback as well. So we actually met just on Tuesday uh, where we met for about a half an hour and we gave our marketing teams feedback on what worked, what didn't work, what could we do better uh, that was there. There was some screenshots and information that was shared. This is a meeting summary that was provided. 
And when you click on this, you get even more information in terms of the recap, the information that was shared, the next steps that were provided. And then for each topic that we talked about, there's a summary of about two or three uh, sentences long for a 30 minute meeting, I could get caught up in probably two minutes now, right? And so this is really handy in terms of staying in, in context, staying in the moment uh, with your team members as well. And then probably for some of you that, you know, use chat tools and things like that often, there's often, you know, feedback in terms of, well, there's a lot of information, right? A lot of conversations and things that go back and forth. How do I make sense of all these things? And so I'll show you this, this example where we've embedded our AI companion into our team chat application. So imagine where we have maybe a lot of back and forth and threading conversations between you know, a couple different people, right? In this one, I only have like one other conversation, but I can basically click this, this uh, AI uh, companion star and get a quick summarization of that entire thread. And this, uh, this experience is fast, whether I have 20 or 30 different threads or I have two, right? The point being is we wanna make this as simple as possible and bring the power of AI as applicable and easy into your experience, which is, is we wanna help you save time. We wanna help you stay on task and we wanna make the experience really, really delightful, right? So I'll scroll down here and we talked about the summary. The other example that I'll share with you is, and Casey gave me permission to share this as well, is the Zoom Cares uh, channel that Casey and others maintain across uh, the Zoom organization. So anytime us as a company, we're doing volunteering activities or we're engaging with the community or people have questions in terms of how do we depict ourselves? What kind of goals do we want to have? What kind of uh, message do we want to send out to, uh, you know, different groups and things? All this is then captured within this, this channel. And I can continue that conversation by having a meeting with everybody. I can schedule a follow-up. Um, I can do other things within this channel. Again, keeping everybody connected, right? So let me move over to um, Zoom phone. And <clears throat> within Zoom phone, which there were some good um, comments in the, in the chat. So I'll spend a little bit of time on this. Um, within Zoom phone, I have um, what, a, what a phone would be, right? I can make calls, I can receive calls. Um, I can have a business line uh, associated with this. I can have my own individual number. That's my business number um, associated with this. I can send messages to people. So in this case, I'll send one to my cell phone um, and we'll automatically like bring up your contact list and I can just say, hello, <clears throat> that's here. And the point of this is back to that point of confidentiality, right? I wanna have, uh, you know, chat conversations with people that um, I'm not giving out my personal number. I'm not, uh, you know, conveying a, a, a personality that's not associated, let's say, with my my community or, or however I want to depict myself. Um, I can do that now uh, and keep it all within a very professional setting uh, using Zoom phone. And then one other cool thing with Zoom phone, again, we've added our AI capability into this. And what I'll share with you is this is a, a voicemail I received uh, from someone internal. And I'm not going to read through that whole transcript, nor am I going to listen to it. But I did ask AI Companion, hey, give me a summarization. And what's the task that John, in this case, is asking me to go do? So what our AI Companion is doing in this case is saying, hey, I'm going to listen to that voicemail for you. I'm going to read the transcript for you. And then I'm going to tell you what are the tasks and things that are most important to you so then you can move on to that next step in your, uh, in your process, right? Now, the last thing that, that I'll show everybody on here is something that we call Zoom Docs. And <clears throat> Zoom Docs is something that we just introduced uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, and what it provides is a, uh, a, a very simple concept, a document that I can create uh, based on either creating notes or I can create it from the meeting. I have different templates and things. If I have projects or a tracker or a database I want to create or other things that I have, we tried to make this as simple as possible. 
so people can get started fairly easily and have a really simple way to engage with each other. So in this case, we have this document that I just bring up um, that is a good example in terms of a global day of caring um, example, right? And in this case, we have uh, a table that has specific tasks that we want to assign to different team members that we've added into this channel, right? In this one, we just have three of us as a demonstration. Uh, and I can go ahead in here for this join global day, you know, work vivo space, which is basically a community space. I'm going to assign that to Casey. Right? And once I do that, she's also going to get a notification of this task and this thing that comes up. Uh, and I can keep everything nice and tidy in terms of all the things and the tasks that we need to do uh, associated with that. The other thing that you'll see here is it's just a document creator, right? I can add different notes. I can different um, add different um, aspects to this. I can do to-do lists. I can do quotes. I can change the style, the colors, the alignment, other different types of things that I want to do as well. But this is where it gets a little different with Zoom. Now that we have the meetings and the conversations and all the other things that take place that are associated with this um, event, well, we could be having meetings that have also taken place as well. So wouldn't it be great if we could take a meeting summary that we've had? And in this case, I'll take, uh, I'll just take this one as an example. <clears throat> and we quickly take that transcript. Again, we're not giving you everything about it. We're just giving you the summarization uh, in regards to it. We're telling you the recap, what were the next steps, the summarizations and all that. And it, all this does is now give this team that's working in this document that additional context and other things that are taking place. It's so much more effective than, you know, listening to a recording and, and watching another meeting and, and doing other things like that. We've really tried to streamline how people work together and bring these things in such a way where they can start to make more sense of the information that they're sharing with each other. And then the last thing I'll show you is, you know, in terms of that meeting summary, right? Maybe I want to create other assets. Maybe I want to create a one pager. Maybe I want to do a, a marketing campaign. Maybe I want to update my website based on the meeting that we had. And I want to use copy and things like that. So I want to use the AI to help me create that. So I could say something like, um, you know, rephrase this meeting summary to include the topics that were assigned only to me, right? And I can go ahead and either reference this document or maybe there was another conversation that we had that I wanna tie into this as well and have AI companion. Now look at that summer summarization, look at the meeting context and other things that were decided. And now it's gonna give me a summary that only focuses on me. So if you have other people within your team or organization, rather than saying, hey, Paul, I want you to do this, and Casey, I need you to do that, the AI could break out all those things separately for them uh, and really save them time as well. So with that, let me uh, go back to our slide. And Casey, if you can bring up that last slide and then we'll just do a real quick summary and then we'll, then we'll move on. So, you know, how do you get started, right? So the first is, Download and log into Zoom, right? If you don't have Zoom, really easy to sign up. If you do have Zoom, just make sure you, you log into the client. Um, the second thing is we're going to be, if we haven't already, set up a chat channel, just like what we showed you earlier, for this event. And we're going to invite everybody on this uh, invite into that chat channel so we can also share with you uh, those examples and, and other things as well within and using Zoom to do it. And then the last is, you know, we ask you to, to use Zoom to create community as well, right? Build your own channels, invite your own members. Uh, and we have a whole plethora of onboarding resources to help you on that journey as well. So with that, let me turn it back to Casey. And then I think we have a few folks that want to share their stories with Zoom as well. Yes, thank you so much, Paul, for going through all of that, really informative and great to see all of the questions that are coming through in chat and in the Q&A. Please feel free to keep sending them through and we'll do our best to answer all of them. 
Um, now I'm happy to hand it over to Vipul to talk a little bit more about how Gadara uses Zoom. Thank you so much, Casey. Um, and, and thank you, Paul. That, <clears throat> that was very enlightening. Those were a lot of features that we're very excited to use at Gadara as well. Uh, and we'll be exploring those for sure. Um, to get us started today, you know, I just wanted to quickly bring, bring everyone up to speed with, you know, what Gudera is all about. So, hello everyone, my name is Vipul and, you know, I'm representing Gudera today. To quite simply summarize what Gudera is all about, our mission essentially is to make it extremely easy for everyone to give back to the community. Uh, we operate in about 100 countries, uh, you know, we offer our services in more than 30 languages. We've empowered 1 million employee volunteers. 500 customers, 60 of which are within the Fortune 500. And through, most importantly, you know, through our efforts, we positively impacted the lives of over 10 million beneficiaries so far. Uh, we have a team of 200 passionate individuals at Kudera who collaborate with 50,000 nonprofits all across the world. And, you know, we enable volunteering on every continent, except Antarctica, of course. And, uh, the essence of Gudera is essentially to power collaboration and to offer a variety of volunteering formats uh, to suit different needs, whether it's virtual, in office, outdoor, or through kiosks as well, and through micro volunteering sessions across these formats as well. And but today we're going to be focusing on virtual volunteering and how we're exactly using Zoom uh, to be able to drive these virtual volunteering opportunities. But before we get to that, uh, we're going to launch a poll right now to understand how you as nonprofits have been using. Uh, Zoom for virtual volunteering. It'd be extremely interesting for us to understand if you have a mature virtual volunteering program or not, and whether you use Zoom for that or not. <clears throat> so I'm just going to give folks about 30 seconds uh, to be able to put in their responses, and then we can have a quick summary of what the results were as well. Thank you. So the results are in, you know, we had about 36% of folks saying yes, 40% saying no, um, and 27% of you saying that you're considering it, but you're curious about what it would take to actually launch uh, a virtual wanting program using Zoom as well at your organization. So this is very interesting results. It's, I would say it's an even split of 30% across all three responses. Uh, so that's really helpful, folks. Um, moving on to the next slide. I really wanted to talk about the five main or five primary functions or features of Zoom that we use in our virtual volunteering experiences. So I'm going to be covering breakout rooms, uh, Miro, which is uh, a part of the Zoom app store as well, and a collaborative whiteboard as well. Uh, the polls feature, uh, tracking attendee emails when they come to volunteer, that's an extremely important feature, and I'll get to that as to why that is so. And of course, the chat function as well, and various sub functions of the chat function as well. So starting with the breakout rooms, when it comes to the breakout rooms, uh, one of the key features, it, it is one of the key features that we leverage when it comes to Zoom, right? And many of our volunteer events are designed to be group-based, uh, you know, fostering collaboration and efficiency. Breakout rooms help us manage these groups effectively, enabling volunteers to work together and, and in smaller teams in a virtual setting. Just to give you an example, let's say if Volunteers are making a guidebook on disaster, uh, you know, post-disaster uh, recovery and relief efforts. We would divide the guidebook into different parts of the guidebook, and we would assign volunteers to specific breakout rooms and go into each of the breakout rooms and work on very specific sections of that guidebook. So that's one of the ways in which we use breakout rooms, and it helps us enable virtual volunteering in a very efficient manner where the expected deliverable or output is comprehensive in nature. So it's easy to split people into teams, essentially. The second feature I wanted to talk about today is the Miro Zoom app. It's, it's something that we've started using recently over the last six to seven months. And it's it's an Miro is a third party app. It's it's a collaborative whiteboard similar to FigJam uh, and Notion and other such tools. Um, so Miro also exists in the Zoom app store and completely integrated into the Zoom client. Uh, the way we use it is for activities that require a whiteboard or, or a more inter interactive visual experience, depending on what the deliverable or output is. So if they're designing posters for nonprofits or brochures, or if it's something that requires a bit more hands-on collaboration between the volunteers, we integrate the Miro board straight into the Zoom client and have volunteers collaborate directly there. This integration has helped us enhance engagement, making the volunteering sessions more dynamic and collaborative as well. The third feature that I want to talk about today is a very crucial feature, and it's the polls. At the end of each volunteering session, virtual volunteering session that we uh, facilitated at Gudera, we use Zoom's 
polling function to gather immediate feedback from volunteers. This data is invaluable. You know, it helps us continuously improve our activities and also provide important insights that we can share with our clients and also our nonprofit partners to continuously, again, improve our experiences and the quality of the output that the nonprofit ends up receiving eventually as well. Uh, the next feature I talk about is extremely important from the perspective of the corporates and the large corporates we work with. Um, that is Zoom's ability to track attendee emails, which is an extremely powerful tool for us. Uh, this integration with Gudera's backend allows us to measure volunteering hours very, very accurately by tracking the number of unique attendees at any given event and also their email IDs. This ensures precise reporting for us. And this is extremely essential for our clients who want to understand the impact of their employees' contributions. They want to understand the efficiency with which they've been volunteering and whether they've been able to reach their goals with respect to impact at the end of each year as well. Lastly, the last function that I want to talk about is the chat function. It's a simple but a very vital feature. Um, during our sessions, we use chat to share important information and resources, such as templates, files, uh, you know, directly with a volunteer. What this does is this helps us cut out a lot of friction when it comes to, let's say, sharing a link of a shared document. It might not open on somebody's system. So a lot of times it's just easier to share a PDF on the chat feature as well, and something that doesn't necessarily exist in a lot of other uh, video conferencing clients, right? You could share links, but it's very hard to actually attach files into the chat in most other clients. So this, this really helps us ensure that volunteers are on the same page and have access to all the guidelines and templates that, that they would need to participate effectively in the volunteering activities. I would like to summarize and conclude by saying that, you know, Zoom's features, they've, they've allowed us to create uh, some very structured, active and impactful volunteering experiences over the years. These have resonated with volunteers really well and meets the needs of our nonprofit partners, most importantly. So absolutely delighted to see that Zoom is continuing to innovate and adding more features that would enable even more comprehensive virtual volunteering activities in the future. Um, if you want to connect with Kudera, um, we will have a message posted in the chat right now where you could either fill out a form to reach out to us uh, or you could just simply uh, you know, email us as well. Thank you so much. And thank you for giving us the opportunity to talk about our experience with Zoom. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Vipul. And Zoom is also a proud partner of Gadera's, and we're so happy that we've had a few chances to also create some impactful volunteering events around the world with our Zoom employees. So thanks so much to Gadera and all of those nonprofit volunteering partners. And I'm happy to now pass it over to Emma, who is going to share more about the use of Zoom at the Center for the Pacific Asian Family. Thank you all. Thank you all, and thank you so much for two amazing presentation. I really enjoy all the inform information I got it. So hello, everyone. I'm very pleased to present at this webinar to share our experience of using Zoom, enhancing our program and services. I'm Emma. Uh, I am the volunteer intern coordinator, coordinator from Center for the Pacific Asian Family. Center for the Pacific Asian Family was founded to help address domestic violence and sexual assault issues in the Asian and Pacific Islander communities. We are actually really committed to meet the specific cultural and language needs of Asian and Pacific Islander women and their family. Our culturally responsive program are available in 30 AAPI languages and dialects. Annually, we serve 4,000 individuals through 24-hour crisis helpline, shelter programs, including emergency shelter and transitional shelter. We also have non-residential counseling and case management. Our partnership and prevention team offer education, outreach, and training and provide community-based violence prevention programs to diverse population. So as you can tell, our organization is committed to meet all the cultural responses need. So remote volunteers means a lot to us and Zoom is always there to help us. So I would like to you know, give more details about like how we utilize Zoom. Um, next slide, please. So as a hybrid organization, we utilize Zoom for our internal communication and meetings. Moreover, Zoom also empowers our communication and involvement when we engage communities by providing trainings, outreach, and also working with volunteers with diverse background. As you can tell from my slides, I was showing two like uh, initiatives we do 
uh, with Zoom. That one is our uh, open house, and the other one is our stay certified training uh, that we host on Zoom. So uh, we actually uh, use the uh, Zoom for our stay certified online training, which is 65 hour, and it is nine sections. Each section is 3.5 hours. So Zoom really provides a lot of functions to help us to provide really engaging experience when our client, when our audience is learning virtually. For example, like, um, for example, Zoom was having a lot of interactive features such as chat and polls. So chat and polls are both extensively used in our sections. The chat serve as a platform for opening activities and audience responses. So, and also the poll feature, I think uh, Wipo was giving a really good example that it's really helping us to uh, give, uh, to engage all the audience to give the answer and start a conversation. And the break room, uh, break room feature is very valuable for creating the social networking spaces within our sections and a lot of training materials. It allows participants to connect, practice interpretation, role-playing exercise, and discuss topics in small groups, which often increases engaging, enhance overall learning experience. So screen sharing is also used in most meetings. For a traditional Chinese holiday gathering, we invited all the Chinese speaking language volunteers to join the watching movie with their uh, still effect on the camera through the Zoom. So I was really impressed that Zoom has a stable for 2.5 hours through the screen, share, uh, screen sharing with no glitches. So I'm really happy with the Zoom function. And also um, as we engage a diverse population of individuals and organization partners, we always start with a Zoom meeting first to build a relationship to understand what other organizations need. And as our uh, collaboration evolve, so we always utilize Zoom for um, for um, remote volunteering, such as interpretation, translation, chat line, hotline, and different projects. And then with, we are also like, when we collaborate with different organizations, we also utilize Zoom for uh, hosting non-violent parenting. And then we also do uh, the donation drive together also Zoom. And then we also have individuals, volunteers who use Zoom. They join us through their phones, through laptops, and we seen that they interact with us with high quality co connections to, that ensures our program success. Next slide, please. And we also want to highlight our hotline program. So for our hotline, because we provide 24 by seven, 300, 365 days, all available to our clients. Make sure that we are always with, uh, always there with them. So we use a different vendor to scrub the caller's name for confidentiality, and we use Zoom phone to host the actual calls because of the Zoom stability. Was able to, you know, like giving our program services to a wide uh, population. We have both staff and volunteers who use Zoom app on their personal laptop and phones and make and receive phone calls. The 100, the, the 100 hotline number is easy access for survivors seeking immediate assistance. Zoom enables a hybrid, a hybrid staff team of a team of staff, interns, and volunteers to co cover the hotlines to work from both home and office. Most volunteers have volunteered their time from home, and they have hotline, and we have hotline volunteers in Northern California as well. So being able to use Zoom to support us, we're able to expand our volunteer pool outside of previous geographic limits. And they, they also really are happy about the quality that they can use uh, Zoom to remote volunteering. And then we also apply Zoom call queues to manage daytime, evening, and weekend hotlines. Imagine we need to cover the hotline for 24 hours with three teams. So Zoom call queues really help us to designate the calls to different people in different location and make sure we deliver their high quality receiving phone calls 
when clients come to us. We also host weekly Zoom meetings, the hotline hours to giving a space for staff, interns, and volunteers to meet, communicate, and address any question they may have during the hotlines. So it's really perfect externally and internally communication when you we utilize Zoom. As a volunteer, I as a volunteer and intern coordinator, I found that Zoom's high popularity among diverse population reduced barriers for volunteers and interns to support in their roles. The majority of them already have Zoom on their computers and their phone, and they use Zoom previously quite often. So their familiarity with Zoom smooths the training and onboarding process. And Zoom has become a reliable platform for remote volunteering and different ways that we engage volunteers. So I'm so happy that Zoom is continue uh, evolving and I'm eager to learn more uh, new knowledge, new techniques to better communicate with our community even more. Thank you. Thank you so much, Emma, for sharing more about the incredibly powerful work that you're all doing at the Center for the Pacific Asian Family. Um, and for coordinating such an impactful um, volunteer-led hotline to support those folks who um, are going through a domestic violence situation. Um, with that, we are now entering q and I know we only have a few minutes left and thank you so much to everyone for sharing your questions in the chat and in the Q&A section. Um, we'd love to answer them live and also, want to point out that we do have a Zoom Learning Center. If anyone is interested in learning more about some of our other Zoom features, I did put a link in the chat in there for you all to read more about that. Um, and yes, if there's anything else anyone would like to share, please feel free to. Everyone did a great job answering the questions in the Q&A in the chat. Your team is amazing. So <laughs> Thank you all very, very much. I'm going to wait a few seconds as we chat to see if anybody else um, want to ask a question. Uh, and thank you, Haley, in the background for TechSuit. Uh, wonderful job. Uh, everybody here has done a wonderful job. Looks like there's lots of thank yous in the chat. So I think we may be complete. <laughs> We Thank you so to much, everyone. Thank you for joining. We hope this was valuable to all of you. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody.